everybody. It's Tyler here at Ontario Provincials checking in 4678 Cyber Cavs. The winners at Windsor just a couple of weeks ago as well, too. And Cyber Cavs have a phenomenal machine they'll be running through. I really like their arm mechanism that they have on here. Uh, we'll be, of course, going through that for that full note journey as we talk about so many cool things on this robot. A great shooter, cool under the bumper intake, uh, some great spotlights. I think that's something Cyber Cavs definitely known for as well. We'll be going through also how they do some of their vision. So let's learn more about Cyber Cavs coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Zen, let's talk about the uh, intake you're about as we work our way in this note journey. So talking about your under the bumper intake and what it's comprised of. Yeah, sure. Uh, our on the bumper intake consists of two parts. Uh, ver two vertical rollers and one horizontal, one horizontal rollers. Our um, horizontal rollers contains up, um, two 3D printed spirals that help the nose sliding into our node engines and um, two vertical rollers with um, surgical tubings on it. The entire intake is powered by this Neo Vortex here because it's through shaft, so we have this end of shaft, shaft um, connect to the horizontal roller down there using belt. And the other side, we have a bevel gear to transfer horizontal motion to vertical motion. And then this link here, uh, link to uh, another side of a vertical roller. And there are a gearbox here to make sure um, they spring properly. When you were uh, looking at the Crescendo game, what kind of testing did you do uh, to get yourself in the, as good a shape as you have uh, for your intake? Oh, hands on. So during testing, we decided to make a plywood kind of frame to test out what wheels worked, what kind of squish we needed. And that's kind of how we decided on surgical tubing and that amount of gap. And also during our testing, when we had the robot fully built, we noticed that our roller was a little too high, so we had to lower it down a bit. Well, Zach, let's also talk about the uh, pass-through on this as well, too. All right. How that system all works, this is really cool. So once our note comes into our intake, it pushes this diverter up. Which, and it's on a spring, so it's passive. So it just goes up and then drops right back down. And that allows us to feed it into the shooter. The note only goes up to about here to give us time to spin up the shooter wheels. And once they're at full speed, this little Neo 550 pushes it the rest of the way in. But if we want to do amp, put the arm back down. If we want to do amp instead, what we can do is, is push it right back through and then this guides the note right up into our end effector. Was that something that kind of uh, played, played in mind that you didn't have to have like two full se separate systems? You could just build one that handles both for you? Yeah, we wanted to have a small robot this year to make sure we're extra fast and a little bit lighter than last year. So it was a pretty decent challenge trying to package it all together. Very cool. Talk to me about uh, your shooter uh, mechanism on here. Uh, for your wheel config and stuff like that, your team has been so accurate out there. So what kind of testing did you do to get your shooter uh, really so optimized? So originally we had uh, horizontal wheels they look like minion wheels. And we found during testing that it was horrible. It could barely shoot two feet. So we ended up looking through other people's research, research that, was on, that was on like Chief Delphi and other research sites. And then we made up our own, our own version of it and added two, since there was space here, we decided to put the vortexes in because why not, they're three hole, so. And we have, it's all one to one, so. We have four gears here to transfer all the motion, so each side spins individually so that we can give it a little bit of spin. We also have a gas strut underneath of it so that we can relieve some pressure off of this vortex here from pulling it up and down. Oh, that's really cool. I like the uh, overall design of that. At what point did you uh, determine and figure out that, like, hey, that uh, side uh, wheel system wasn't going to work out for you? The first shot. <laughs> <laughs> Very very interesting on that. Uh, but overall, your team has done a really good job of uh, getting to where it needs to be. Uh, let's talk more about this arm that you had as well, too. I think this is it's just so simple and efficient, and it's really cool. So it's a three-axis arm. We have two Neos powering each joint, and then we have a 550 with an ultra plant plantary on it. Yeah, thanks, Sam. 
We have an ultra planetary with a Neo 550 that controls the rotation. Because for AMP, we have, we have a different angle than we do for trap, so we need to have it to be able to pivot. And then this 550 here powers our rollers, which are just surgical tubing and 3D printed spacers. And that's about it. Can we see a note come in and demonstrate how a couple of these features work? Yep. Can we set the arm back down? And can we put it back up in the arm? Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can actually re-divert it back into yeah. your arm as well, too. Is it like, initially when it comes in, can you choose just to go in your arm initially, or does it have to go to your shooter first? It has to go up to the shooter first before it can go up to the arm. Okay. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, overall, the super cool packaging for this, and the way that uh, you've come up with all the system, it's been working so well. So congratulations on everything that's gone into this so far. Uh, let's pass off to Alex, who's going to be talking about your uh, climber mechanism uh, that you have. Uh, talk to me more about this. This is kind of interesting. Like. Is this on like a wind system or how does this actually break down for you? So our climber, we wanted it to be short this year so we could go underneath the stage. So we have it on these uh, like poles that will go up and they're driven by this Dyneema cable. Dyneema cable is a special cable made out of UHMW so that it will never stretch and it's good up to 1,000 pounds. So it, we can carry our whole robot very, very easily. And we've got it on, down here we have a spool of Dyneema cable which then goes through, we took apart a ratchet, and then a ratchet can only go one way, and then there's a, it's called a pawl, which goes into it, so it can only spin the one direction. And we have a spring-loaded, we put it on a spring-loaded lever, so that when there's power to the robot, we have it on a spring-loaded lever, and this, a solenoid is powering the lever, so that when there's power to the robot, it will hold it in such a way that when there's power to the robot, the solenoid will hold, it will pull the ratchet away, sorry, so that it can spin up and down when we tell our climber to go up. And then as soon as robot, as soon as power is cut to the robot at the end of the match, the spring will activate and it will lock the ratchet back in so that our climber can't go down and our robot will stay up on the chain. When the operator tells the robot that it is close enough to the chain and that it is ready to go, it will activate the uh, motors at the bottom that will spin the Dyneema cable spools and it will raise, there. we've got a, uh, a pulley in here which will raise up our arm so the bottom hook is for if we want to do a single climb because the robot has to be higher up so we can score in the trap and if we want to do a harmony because there's a second robot on the chain the chain will be higher up so there's less distance between our robot and the trap so this will ac accommodate for that extra height that we don't have to cover so that we can still score in the trap. Joseph, let's talk about vision on your robot uh, and how you're implementing it. Uh, Cybercabs is overall a lot of cool stuff that goes into it, so walk me through some of the software features. Absolutely. So for vision detection in terms of notes, we have a limelight right behind our 4678 sign. That limelight is what we use for auto note detection. So we use the limelight. We have two pipelines, one pipeline for detecting close notes and one pipeline for detecting far away notes. And that helps us always get an accurate reading on where the note is. And then based on the, the position, we can drive right into the note. In terms of shooting, we have a camera here connected to a Raspberry Pi which runs photon vision. Um, it detects April tags and will return a pitch and a yaw value. We can use those values to help us um, determine the angle a robot needs to be at and the angle of a shooter. The pitch value translates directly into the angle of a robot, so we can just rotate to that angle. And then, through a variety of testings from different distances, we've determined best angle position for each distance from the speaker. So we've generated a polynomial line of best fit, and using that we can ex ex extrapolate the angle of the shooter. From your team on here looking at uh, Provincials, was there anything major changes that you made, like getting ready for Provincials, or uh, should you qualify for World Championships, any big changes you're looking at making? Um, we have not made any big changes since Windsor. We've just done some more fine tuning with our shooter and stuff. Uh, yeah. Cool, let's uh, wrap up on this robot, pass over to Jack, talk about some of your Tana smotes you're doing. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you got the, I think the signature LEDs on your robot, something I always think about Cybercabs too. Yeah, so uh, our autonomous modes are primarily planned in, programmed with Path Planner, but they've actually been modified so that when we run them, our robot will rotate until it sees a note it's allowed to grab. It will drive to that point, and then based on what the motors have, the values the motors have given us, we know our X and Y coordinate on the field and are able to path plan our way back to the speaker to shoot, even though we're in a new position. 
So walk me through the uh, LEDs in your robot as well. Is it giving any feedback or is it just meant so you uh, so your vision's better? Talk me more about that. So while our robot's disabled, our LEDs are split into nine segments here along the side. You can see these, are, these four on this side cover the, each swerve motor. These here cover our gyro, our shoulder, elbow, limelight camera, and our regular camera. Essentially, when everything is working just fine, these are all blue. The second anything is irregular, it, uh, it runs its own diagnostics. It says, hey, uh, I'm not working properly. I have a value that I shouldn't have. And then the, this segment of individually addressable LEDs will light up red and everything else green. That lets us, our pit crew know what's wrong. So, for example, our elbow, our, our arm here has specific coordinates it's not allowed to go to because otherwise it's out of bounds for the robot or it's gonna hit itself because it can't be like more than a foot, right? So the second it starts moving out of this area, then we get the shoulder telling us, hey, I'm not supposed to be here. And then we know something's gone wrong, especially if the shoulder isn't out of the robot. That'll tell us, hey, something's wrong with the, with the encoder in the engine, in the, in the shoulder, shoulder. And then so on and so forth for the limelight, the gyro, the camera up here, and then all the swerves, modules as well. Well, Cybercast, congratulations on a phenomenal robot this year and a great season so far as well, too. We wish you best of luck here at Provincials, but a lot of cool stuff for teams to take away from this. So thanks for being a great inspiration to the FRC community, and good luck here at Provincials. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.